Welcome to the workshop. Now, many of you will have seen this ridiculous little motorbike lurking around the workshop, and I thought today is the perfect day to take a closer look at it. Basically, a friend of mine's had it in storage for many, many years because it just stopped working. And so he got me to drag it out of his storage unit, and I thought we'd actually try and work out exactly why it doesn't run. Now, there are a few really obvious reasons why that might be the case. The first of all is it doesn't have an ignition key. So, Paul, can you bring over that Phillips screwdriver, and we'll try and get that headlight out, and we'll yeah, try and sure. get to the wiring on the ignition. Well, we've got one there. Yeah. So it's quite a mad little thing, isn't it, really? It's great, isn't it? Cool, okay, I'll do this side. So what we're hoping is that by taking the headlight off the front of the bezel here, we can actually get access to all the wiring that will be inside. And hopefully, one of those wires, or some of those wires, should be for the ignition. So can you see can, some? Yeah, give it a yank. There we go. Is it, is, 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 hang on. That one there. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Brilliant. So we have found our wire, which is good. There we go. So we've got four. Four wires. Interesting. Which is, yeah. Any clues Can you pull colour? that out anymore? How far will that come out? Oh, I need to, I would, I'd like to check actually. So we've got, what's that? We've got basically a black and a black and white, and we've got a red and, and, and a, a green. green. Yeah. You've got the same on that side. Yes, I have. That's the place to start. What I might do, I'll just go to a, a multimeter and just check what we've got on the key out, even though we've only got two positions, so it's on or off, but clearly we've already got two circuits that are being connected, and maybe the black is the earth. It would make no sense. No, probably not. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, let's have a look at that, so, first of all, we'll just connect two together, nothing, nothing that way, nothing that way, nothing that way, so it's completely open circuit at the moment, so I suspect then, when you connect that together, it probably connects two wires to two wires. The question is, what do they do, where do they go? Yeah, <laughs> good point, good point. So, so I think we need to just make up a couple of little jumper cables for now. We can take the spark plug out, jump well, a couple of wires together. Well, theoretically, this is actually going to be powered by a magneto, so there's no battery on board. No. So obviously, once it's spinning up, the engine's running, then it's going to make electricity so that it can actually run the lights and everything else, but also run the coil. So it's quite critical that we get this connected, but then on the other hand, it's also probably not too terrible if we connect the two no, it wrong wires do, together. No, it do too much damage. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. Good place to start. I think we need to take the plug out in the first instance anyway. Right, so okay. should we can turn it over. Let's I, do that then. I'm going to get right. a socket. Next job. Actually, look there. There's actually a cut wire there. You can see they've actually lopped off that. And there's another one here, actually. There's a green one here. Oh, and there's another one. <laughs> so there's a blue one as well. So somebody's been butchering the wiring loom quite badly. So you know that what that, I'll tell you what that might have been. Have you noticed there's no indicators on the front? Oh, no, that is interesting because around the back here, we've got a whole bundle of wires. We've got a couple of what look like earths and a couple of broken terminals. Again, look at that with the orange and the green and, in fact, also the blue. So, yeah, and also look, sort of loose. I and mean, we've got an indicator switch here. But we have nothing on the back either. We've got either. nothing or a tail light, so... I think you're right. I think, obviously, somebody's removed all of the lighting, which means they've chopped stuff from both ends. Yeah, that would explain why there's all these plugs that... Yeah, aren't going anywhere. Ends. Exactly, yeah. So I'm going to take this spark plug out. Ah, now this could be the telltale for the indicators, couldn't it? Because you probably have somewhere here a little light, maybe even to up here. Yeah, it might be here. Yeah, it could be that one. Yes, of course, on top of the headlight. That makes sense. Oh, hello. Or not. Or not. God, that's running a bit rich. That was running a bit rich, and it's a tiny, tiny spark plug, isn't it? It is tiny. I'm not sure we're going to get a little boroscope in there to have a look inside and see the condition of the barren piston, but 
You're jumping the gun a little bit there, it's got to be said, because we need to have some kind of ignition before we can actually check for a spark. Well, I figured that, but I figured two reasons why I've taken it out. Mm -hmm. One, it's going to be easier to turn the engine over. Of course. To actually check for a spark yep. with, with the plug out. And also, I need to put it in here, yes. into the uh, HT cap, and put it on the side of the uh, engine here so we can check for a spark. I was going to say, and you are wearing anti-static gloves, so it might be best if we either change the gloves or I have to hold that. Uh, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. It'd be so fine. that's cool. So first of all, we need to do is we need to work out this switch. So looking at that, now we could disconnect this just by popping that apart, but I think we could be cleverer than that. So if you look on the back, you can see we've got this little copper sort of dimple there, and then we've got a black and we've got a red wire. So I reckon, if I go a bit further along, you've then got the sort of another little copper dimple, and then we've got the green and the black and white wire. So I think when you turn on the ignition, the rest is actually black and that copper, and then the little thing will slide across, so then it connects the black and the red. And I think it's the same thing, again, when you turn it around, the rest is green and that copper, and then it moves to the connect the green and the black with the white stripe. So essentially, I think if we connect up those two pairs of wires, we can make our ignition work a treat. If make we... a couple of little jumper wires for this block here then, maybe. Yes, we could even put a little switch on, I reckon, actually. Let's do that. Fantastic. Okay. Right then, so, there we go. so I've already forgotten. So it was basically green onto black and white. So yeah, and I put just, some, some marks on yeah, the wires. So let's have that one there, okay. those two there. So I'll attach there, one was the stripe. So we're going to have, let's pretend the blue is the black, as it were. So that can go down to there. And the green is on the other side, I think. So there. Yep. And then do the same again. So where's the other black gone? It's over that side. So we'll put that blue on there. Just so we have some sense of what's going on. We're going to have some kind of ignition or possibly non-ignition, depending on how it goes. So the next thing is to crank it over and see if we've got a spark. So I guess I'll put the ignition on. OK. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Go for it. No, no nothing. spark. Nothing at all. Just. Just in case, because yep. obviously it's quite a simple thing. Okay. If I turn the ignition off, yep. it might actually connect things to earth or the other way around. It might be open circuits. Let's try that. Yeah, I've got a spark. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's brilliant. So we've now got a spark, which is quite wonderful. And so basically the switch on the ignition here is actually probably to try and maybe drag the coil down to earth to actually stop it from making a spark. So this is actually how you kind of turn off the bike rather than how you turn it on. I guess Which it. means that in its current state, before we added the switch, I guess you could get it going and then you could never turn it off unless you just crashed it, stalled it or whatever, which is a bit mad, isn't it? So that's quite interesting. So that means if we've got a spark, why don't we pop the plug back in? Then we're going to need some fuel, aren't we? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, so we've now got fuel, which is great. I need to put on the old fuel switch. So I guess, well, we've got two settings. You've got obviously like the low tank, the reserve and the full tank. So we'll put it on to the reserve for now. Oh, <laughs> we have a leak. Oh dear. Hang on, I'll just grab a spanner. So... I think we might need a fibre washer or something, but that is still... Yeah, well, it's slightly better, but we'll see how we go. So we've got fuel, we've got a spark. Next thing, I guess it's going to have a choke. Yeah, we've got the choke cable here. We need to connect it because it's just kind of... It looks like there should be a bracket here yeah, holding yeah, the outer yeah, cable yeah. because I reckon I could 
Get well, if, you can, if you can back hitch it in on that. for now, we can just pull the whole cable. It's a Bowden cable, so it's got an inner and outer. Normally, the outer will be attached to something, and it's the inner that moves when you actually operate the, the mechanism. So I think this way, if you, if you can actually get it in, we can just yeah. pull the whole thing just to get it started. Because that's all we want to know right now is, will this thing actually go? It's got those nimble fingers you're getting right oh, in, which is lovely. It's, it's, uh, it's working. So back to fitting there. Okay, I should tell you what, actually, if I get a screwdriver, I could probably help you from underneath. Yeah, you can lift it up from that side, Paul, and I'll then pop in. That's it. No. There you go, is that working? Yeah, nice. Looking good. Oh, nice. Look at that. Beautiful. So when I let go, that should be Perfect. Attached. Now just operate it, just while you're there, just to make sure it's working. Beautiful. Oh, okay, lovely. so we've got a choke. So the only thing we haven't really checked, actually, is the oil. Do we have any? So let's um, just I, I'm going to do that, that down, have a little check here. It's supposed to be level, obviously. It's looking hopeful. There is actually some oil on the dipstick. Oh, look, perfect. Nice. So, I think without much of more of an ado, we can now kick it over and see if it actually goes. I think we could. I'll tell you what, should we do it? easy to just kick it over, actually. Oh, let me get up. Up you get. Here we go. I'm sure this isn't even slightly dangerous. We could put the ramp down, but... Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I guess we also could do with a little bit of choke. We'll kick it over a few times first to see if that's better. Okay. Full choke, should we give it a go? Oh, ho, ho! Fantastic! Wow. <laughs> Listen to that power. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Good job. Right then. So the next thing we want to do is put some air in the tyres and see how this thing goes. Fantastic. <laughs> now that's a lot of fun, but actually it's also quite nice to have a little break with a cup of tea, isn't it? Yeah, I'll second that. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for watching. And if you're enjoying the show, do let YouTube know by clicking like, even add a comment, but particularly go for the subscribe button as well. And then what should they do? They should click on the bell to receive notifications of future videos. Fantastic. Or anything else you bothered to write no, about. It happens yeah, rarely, I've got to say, so apologies for that. <laughs> now, I've got a question here from Cameron Murphy. Now, he's actually, well, his parents are trained mechanics, but also he's a self-trained mechanic. He's been doing the trade for about six years or so, and he's noticed that on a lot of trucks, they have a pair of 12-volt batteries. He's not sure whether they're 12 volts or 24 volts. Now, obviously, since probably, what, the 50s or 60s, I guess, trucks have mostly been running 24 volts, haven't they, I guess? That's correct, yeah, 24 volt. Yeah, but trucks. it could yeah. be possible that an older truck might have 12 volt system. So the way to check that, if you've got these two batteries, these are little bike batteries we were using before, and now you've got here, you've got your positive and your negative and your positive and your negative. Now, uh, however they're wired up or however they're connected, you're gonna have one of the black or the negative terminals going to an earth, the positive is gonna go off to the starter motor, the engine bay, but it's how they're connected together that makes it easy to tell what's going on. So if you've actually got, say for example, in this position, if you've got one cable actually connecting the two batteries together, then in that case, it's actually gonna be a 24 volt system. But if you've actually got, perhaps they might be in this position, two cables connecting the batteries together, then that means it's gonna be 12 volts, it's just gonna have a bigger capacity. That makes sense? Perfect sense. Fantastic, thank you. Lovely, okay, so we have another question here from Jensen J from Malaysia. And it says, how is the Range Rover project? Well, that's a really good question, because as the saying goes, all this procrastination ain't gonna get John's Range Rover did. Well, there we go. So, we should make a plan, we should get on with this. I think we should make a plan. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very scared, because yes. obviously as you know that the, uh, the body is rubber mounted to the chassis. But unfortunately on John's Range Rover, I think someone's added some uh, additional support in over the years. When you say someone, we think we mean John. Yeah, probably John, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of not, supported in the correct way now but to so be fair that does mean mounted. yeah but it does mean that the body is actually still attached to the chassis even though i've driven it to the mt station and back so that's thank you for that john um but i think yes we're going to need to do something i mean the idea is obviously we had a chat with john we're not going to throw it away we're not going to blow it up we are going to turn it into a rat rover yes we, we are we so we're going to keep the dents on the outside make it look a little bit ratty a little bit tidier but still a little bit ratty but then i think the underside should be really lovely shouldn't it well let's hope so i think we you know maybe strip the chassis down, mm -hmm. I'm going to get galvanised. 
I think it'd be good to galvanise it. I think it might also be quite nice to make it a bit of a mad colour. Something yeah, we, you might yeah, not, we could. Yeah, yeah, maybe we orange or something like that. Of course, yeah, orange. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe something else. We don't know. But OK, that'd be kind of neat. So obviously, to do that, I think whatever happens, we're going to have to take the body off at some Unfortunately, point. Unfortunately, yeah. And the weird thing is, there's this big old manual right here. And so far, I haven't found any reference at no. all to removing the body. And I must admit, I read the book as well. Right. I've got reference to removing body panels. Yeah but not actually removing body. So that does suggest that if Range Rover or Land Rover themselves don't think you need to do that, then maybe we shouldn't be doing that. But obviously we are going to do that because but it makes the most sense. We need to do it in order to <laughs> do the chassis because I think we need to take everything off the chassis, do all the rust repairs, yeah. get it dipped, get it galvanised. Definitely. And then and it's it, a nice place to start when actually bolting everything else back on. That's, as the, be that's the best part, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Bolting all the new parts on. Or the refurbished parts. Or the, the refurbished parts. parts. Yeah. All, the, yeah. all right. But actually, it's a good point. We forgot to talk about the, the top tip of the week. So top tip of the week. There should be some wonderful flashy logo that Pixies have prepared at this point. But what we have is a wonderful little top tip here, actually. It's quite relevant from Howard Duncan, our okay. friend who's doing the, the sort of the Beetle repair in America yep. or restoration. Hello, Howard. Hey, Ed. It's a privilege to be with you and your followers again to update you on the 68 convertible Beetle project I've been working on. Um, you may remember last time that we had put the front end together and had a bunch more things to do on the chassis. Uh, the chassis is now complete except for a couple of small things. We've worked on the transmission and gotten the brakes done and uh, everything is ready to go. So the next step is turning our attention to the restoration of the body itself. Um, I needed a rotisserie to affect the repairs on the body. Uh, the cheapest ones in, in the States anyway are about $1,000. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a great idea of using two engine stands to uh, pretty much accomplished the same task. So that's what I did. I bought a couple of engine stands and I made some frames that would attach to the body itself. So this is the rear one here. And I've attached it to the bumper mounts. And then if you will come around to the front, I've done the same thing on the front. Uh, just made some gussets to give it some strength and we are able to uh, do whatever we need to to the body to turn it and to make it do what it needs to do for the restoration. So that's where we're at right now. And I'll be glad to update you as we progress. And thanks again for having me on. That's quite a smart idea, isn't it? It is. The only thing is, I don't know whether uh, engine, engine stands would be sufficient on our Range Rover body. It's well, I think there's, quite, there's two issues. Big, isn't yeah, it? not only well, the, the body of a Beetle is quite nice and light, isn't it? Yeah. But on the Range Rover, it is very heavy, I would imagine, but also it's pretty flimsy. It's pretty flimsy. And if I remember an engine stand, it's got quite a narrow track. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether they'd be a bit unstable. <laughs> so we'll tip it over and then the whole thing uh, will end up The whole thing will just go on its side anyway. Yeah. So and We could always roll it onto a mattress. Oh, I think that's the perfect solution. I don't know. Well, we'll have a little think about that because that's going to be difficult. I can actually go down the really... local council tip and get some mattresses. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, no, that's a great top tip, Howard. Thank you very much. Thank you, that's Howard. That's a good job. So, yes, so I think that's the thing. So we're going to, it's going to be quite a few weeks work, I think, doing all the various bits and pieces. I think when it comes to the engine, you should rebuild it because that's your thing. Well, I think we'll take it, take it apart and have a look inside. Definitely. We're definitely and up for that. The gearbox needs rebuilding for sure, because although I did nearly fix it a tiny moment, definitely need to Yeah, well, that that's properly. kind of a clean room environment because it's an automatic gearbox. Yes. So maybe we can have a look. I think so. We'll maybe yeah. get an expert on that one. Yeah, <laughs> so, there we go. Okay, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. And then of course, obviously, things like wheels and tyres, that's the fun bit at the end. Obviously, the brakes, I mean, they're probably quite adequate as they are. They just need to be smartened up a yeah. little bit, made them nice and how's tidy. The, how's the transfer box? Did you I try that? I think it does exist. I think it does. Yeah, it, it sort, sort of works it's a bit. there. Yeah, and it makes a few really, rattly noises. It I makes sense to have it checked. It or does. at least check it to yeah. make sure it's okay. And of course, there is a big chain inside the transfer box, and that can stretch. That definitely needs to be checked before we send them off into the wild. Yeah, definitely. So cool. So there's going to be quite a few things to do. I think probably, well, let's say let's say weeks, call it months, or hopefully within a year. I'd maybe. say I'd say some months. Mind you, that actually there is an advantage. The longer we take, the nearer it's going to be to not needing to pass an MOT test to be on the road. Yeah, but it still needs to be safe. There is that. So really, the first job is going to be taking the body off the chassis. And that is quite a big one. So I think maybe back to some procrastination. I think so. Good. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, so there's a sticker on the back here that says 29 PSI for the fronts and 33 PSI for the rear. And that doesn't matter whether you've got a passenger or not. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> that's quite ridiculous. But, um, oh, hello. That's quite well speedy. There we go. Oh. Bang on. And then so the 33 back. on the rear. Okay. It's a bit fiddy, this one. Yeah, hang on. Just get the... Yeah, that's not the right uh, inner tube, I would suggest. It seems a bit long, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get this on here. <laughs> Is it? You can't even get the dust cover off. Um, hang on, bend that around a little bit. Yeah. So 33. It does seem quite a bit for a tiny tyre. It does, doesn't it? I guess it's for heavy people like myself, which is good. That'll do. Perfect. Lovely. I'm going to put the dust cover on, even though there's no room for the dust to get in between the valve and the hub, but that's fine. So this is it. So no, I guess it's because it's kind of more your size, perhaps you get to go first, but let's put the lights all back together again. And in fact, I'll tell you what, let's take this other... I don't want to, I don't want to do any damage yet. We'll customise it later. I just want to get it to actually work. So if we just pull these wires out of here. Yeah, and just um, thread them through the top. Put them down there. Yeah, perfect. You got it? Right, so now we're going to pop. So as our B was into that one there. Put the other one like so. And we've got that one goes that way to the red, and that one goes to the green. That should have worked perfect. a treat. You get that one back in there. It's amazing how much wiring loom is in there. It's like a big bird's nest, isn't it? it is like that. Whatever that was for, that goes in there. So hopefully, there's a bit of room there. It's <laughs> a little bit crunchy. Maybe too, too many wires. The one, I think, are you in? Yep. Fab. It's going to get exciting now, maybe some stunts. That's going to have some uh, good fun. Well, it goes all right, I guess. <laughs> you should use the little off switch we made, Paul. That'll no. make it a lot better. I'll tell you what <laughs> I should do. I should actually uh, put, pull the clutch in. Uh, well, that's good. It's, it? it? yeah, it's working, It is working. That's good. And it's, what are you doing in the paddock? Well, it, it's a paddock bike, so I'm just trying it out in the paddock. Yes, I, I guess mean, that makes sense. Everything's really good. I've got no leaks. That's good. Well, come on in. Let's have a go. Come on in. It's obviously built for you, but I feel that this is the time where we... Uh, I think you're too. Um, I think you're too big for it, really. <laughs> I don't. You know, you know what? I don't know. Sure, I've actually ridden a bike with gears. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. So, so that's my clutch, and that's my gears on that side. So we need to make it go. And it looks like even with our little choke cable, it's not. No, it does kind of work. Yeah. All right. Are we actually in gear? No, we're not. This no, we're good. not. We're in neutral. Here we go. Oh. Come on. Oh, Nelly. There we go. Perfect. What could possibly go wrong? Right, so, so clutch in, gear down, and then just gently feather. Feather the clutch, plenty of revs. <laughs> Off you go. Oh, <laughs> it's just far too big for it. <laughs> Hang on, we can do better. Hang on, we can do better. I am, it's, it's, it sort of needs to be. Right, let's try again. And there's an actor starting it, by the way. Which is what? Which is, um, it's a secret. <laughs> no, you just, you've just kind of... Oh, there you go, there you go. So okay. plenty of revs, plenty of revs. Clutch in, gear on. Oh, easy, Tiger. That was a wheelie. That's pretty stylish. I would say already for star points, I'm way ahead of you. 
it, that was pretty good. Well, I, I could have done a wheelie. Wheelies, yeah. Well, I, it's because yeah. I've got clutch control. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the difference. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, my word. Hey! Ah. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. I'm going to change gear. I'm going to change gear. No, I'm not. No, I've, I've, oh, no. <laughs> I've got to learn to commit into the corner. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's, it's a little bit muddy, isn't it? Hang on, I'm in third. <laughs> oh, he stalled it again. Oh, no. No, it's still in. No. I think we've established that I'm awesome at this. But well, um, I'm going to go for a bit more of a drive. No, I think we've established that you're far too large for it, well, actually. There is and, that, but and I think... It, and it's my size. Well, I'll go for a little... More. I see that. Oh, look at that. Right oh, there. that's good. I like so, that. what I think we'll do, I'll go for a bit more of a drive. Yeah, got him. And I've got an idea. OK. Oh. <laughs> it's not a very good idea. Right! Oh, no! <laughs> Clutch in. <laughs> what, no. have you done? what have you done? That wasn't my idea. My idea was actually much better than that. <laughs> let's, let's try again. So we're definitely not in gear. Right, it's good. It's amazing how much the... Uh... I'm going to try out my first idea later and I'll do another idea right now. Here we go. There we go. That's much more nice. Oh dear. Don't break it. <laughs> you say that, but oh, oh, oh my word. Oh, yeah. Easy, oh, Tiger. Oh, easy, hey. easy, easy. I think we're doing quite well. Easy. Watch this. Oh, look at that. It works. works. So, that's all good. But there is one thing we do need to test. You remember, on the back of this, it does say very clearly there is driver and, and passenger. passenger. Yep, so we so, need to get two people on it. Yeah, so I think we need some health and safety equipment. So just grab hold of these. So I think that one suits you best. Oh, thank you very much. So now these are from our bathroom bike. Which is why they're so fetching. God, do you remember that? That was years ago. <laughs> a long time ago. That's got nitrous, but that's obviously a story for another day. But uh, no, there's an argument we should have been wearing these already, but hey, it's grass, it's all fine. I've been on grass. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to... So how are we going to do this then? Well, I don't know. So this is what I was quite intrigued by. So basically, what we're talking about here is having two people on here. And I don't imagine they're two full-size people, but you're not. So there's one and a half well, people I'm here. half size. Well, I think maybe, what about if I sit on the tank? This is all going to get a little bit close, isn't it? Is if I sit on the tank... Oh, that seems quite... Uh... Yeah, and I can do the steering. Well, yeah, but if you're doing the steering, who's doing the balancing? <laughs> well, we're just we're both doing the balancing. Right, take that stand off. Well, where are my feet going to go? On the, on the footrest. Well, where are your feet going to go? Well, they're not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to that be safe? dangling. Now, what about... Should I not be holding on to something? Well, I don't know. I've, I've seen the way you ride a bike. I mean, so I think it'd be the, better I, I mean, this control. has possibilities. Yep. What about then? You go the other way around. So if you go, if I you can't sit on the tank. Well, no, no. But if I was to stand, I might put the stand back down again. But if I was to stand up here, then where would you go? I don't know. I think that, I think to be honest. But if I yeah, if I go on the, I think that's that's. that's oh no 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 no. That's no, not no. going to be good. No. Uh, hang on. If I put my feet on the thing on that end, how about now you have a go? What's where would you go? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, looks, that looks quite safe. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Well, the nice thing about that is you can run off I when am, you fall off. I am. I could just stand are we up gonna try, uh, that, and I mean, discharge sounds... myself on the motorbike. I think that's... Um... So, are we, are we ready? I don't know. Well, maybe, I'm not sure if that's... Is that really very safe? Because you can't see what's coming up. No, it's fine. I don't need to see what's coming up. Well, I just need well, to feel safe. I think we should try it. Let's give it a go. Yeah. So, first of all, we've got to start it. Make sure it's out of gear. Make sure you turn the, the, the switch in the right position. Hang on. Is it, is it out of gear? Hang on. No, it's not out of gear. And the Still switch. Not out of gear. It was in second. I was doing very well. Right. So. Switch, switch. Yeah, switch, all, switch. That, all that as well. Yeah, okay. Go on. go on then, get it going. 
See, he's got the knack now. Oh, no wheelies. I'm not sure about this. Are you sure about this? Yep. Ah! <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> All right, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Am I going to go into second gear? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, hey! hey! Whoa! <laughs> Hang on. Well, that kind of worked. It kind of worked. Let's, let's, let's try again. Why don't we try to, to try sit forward this time? Yeah, go on then. All right, hang on. Let's get it going. Well, should we get it going first? Yeah, get it going first. Here we go. So you're going to go on the front. Go on. I got it. I'm not sure about this one. Well, easy, Tiger. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Oh. I don't know, this feels safer. How about corners? <laughs> Come on, give me some beans! Come on! No, 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 no! No! no. Oh. <laughs> obviously indubitable proof that you can actually have two passengers or a driver and a passenger on a madness bike which is quite awesome stuff now there's a few things to sort out but clearly all of those are a job for another day come back here oi hang on hang on hang on i'm coming in <laughs> coming in keep going keep going keep going, keep going. yes 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 <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.